Our next speaker today will be Iman Uzman, a 20-year-old who is the CEO of Ranguru.com, a tech-enabled education provider in Indonesia. Prior to that, he founded and ran some of the largest Indonesian youth-led movements, including the Indonesian Future Leaders and the Indonesian Youth Parliament. His works have been acclaimed globally, including the 2011 ASEAN Youth Award, the 2011 Nation Youth Assembly Recognition on Humanitarian Development, and the 2011 Global Teen Leader Award. He has earned his master's degree, summa cum laude, from Columbia University in Education Development. He is one of the few Indonesians who have been selected as the Global Laureate Fellow and spoke at the UN General Assembly. Please welcome Mr. Iman Nuzman. Hi. Hi. OK. Oh, loud. Um, my name is Iman. I'm 23 years old. Uh, I live in Jakarta, single and happy. Um, and like many other speakers today, I want to tell you a story, something that I'm very passionate about, something that I love about, um, which makes who I am today. Um, I was born and grew up for 18 years there. And, 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 and growing up in West Sumatra um, makes me see and address education issues um, unfold in my eyes very precisely, ever since I can remember. Let alone the problem of lack of resources, lack of quality of education, lack of the quality of the teachers, and so on and so forth. But one thing that I remember precisely is that the, the fact that my family um, didn't really care about education that, that much made my family was treated unjustly by our neighbors. So let me give a context. I'm uh, the youngest son in my family. I have five sisters and no brother, definitely. I'm the youngest one in family, but I'm the first one in my family, my entire family, who finally has master's degree or even bachelor's degree. So no one in my family went to college, including my parents. But despite the fact that my parents didn't go to college, it didn't automatically uh, force them to forbid their kids to go to higher education. However, one philosophy that they believe in is that without higher education, you can basically just survive. You can basically just have a good life. Well, we were not rich, not poor as well. We were just okay. And this philosophy has carried them, um, has carried them through their life. And my sisters took it for granted. So um, for my sisters, they affirm that basically they didn't need to go to higher education because at the end of the day, women will just end up being married, stays at home, both which we do not require to, um, a higher education degree. But I chose to take a different path because I believe that education is just, uh, it's just not a right for every single Person. But education is actually a means for you to change the lives of the people. It's a means for me to change how my neighbors think about who I am, about who my family is. And that's why I chose a different path. So I started my first education venture when I was 10 years old. So maybe uh, when I was a lot younger than you all here. So I started by actually establishing a free library for underprivileged kids in my neighborhood. At the time, I had no idea at all about volunteerism, about community service, um, CAS, um, all of the jargons that we are hearing every day repeatedly. But what I knew at the time is just a young kid who wanted to help the other, um, his friends, basically. Because at the time, I was crazy about playing cards and then, and then playing footballs. And the, and the people that I played with have to go, um, couldn't, couldn't play that, that happily. Uh, because after school, they have to help their parents work um, and, and, and then help them to attend um, additional income. So what I did was just something very simple. I started creating a library in front of my house, moved all of my books to that room, and then started teaching younger kids. Because I just love to be um, pretending like a teacher. Like you have control, and then like you... Oh, there are many teachers here. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you have control, and then you can basically tell them what to do. That's what I like about being a teacher. 
Yeah, am I right? No. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, and then, and then, and then, and then that activity has led me to, to to something bigger, to something bigger. Until in 2009, I finally founded a youth-led organization called Indonesian Future Leaders. So it's basically a non-profit organization which organizes young people to do social goods. So we equip young people to do um, social projects and equip them with the skills and resources they need to actually do something good for the community. So uh, it turns out to be something big, thousands of people involved. Um, we reach out to hundreds of thousands of people across the country. We set up like tons of projects, particularly in education. Some people started library in South Sulawesi, some kids started um, a kids' newspaper in, in, in Nusa Tenggara, and, and many others. And then that decision made me think that, okay, I think I want to do something for education. I want to do something in education for the rest of my life. And that's what makes me um, uh, and then go to, to, to Colombia to, um, to, to take a master program in education. So I went to Colombia, learned about education philosophy, learned about uh, comparative education policy, learned about how education um, is applied in, in, in many contexts. Um, but one thing that, that, that I didn't expect is that I finally got exposed with how actually technology can be so transformative in education. I got exposed on how actually education can be um, applied and can be designed beyond the classroom setting. And, and then, and then, um, and then I, 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 I got exposed with so many ideas, with so many projects, and the US in particular, um, to, to change education. Maybe some of you know Coursera, for instance. Um, um, a program where you can basically enroll in, in, in university level classes um, held by top universities like Harvard, Stanford, um, Yale, and others, and, and then get a certificate when you complete the classes. Or maybe some of you have encountered um, Khan Academy, where you can basically access um, online materials um, to, to improve, to help you improve your learnings. Or um, Panorama. Um, um, a, a company which is supported by Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook to basically help schools create a survey so that they can make a better policy, make a better education policy. Or like this one, Class Dojo. Um, it's essentially an application, web and mobile application, where basically students will be rewarded for their positive behaviors. Because research found that actually 50% of the time of the teachers are actually spent um, to ensure that your behavior is good. And the rest 50% is for teaching. So it's so in, um, uh, inefficient, so ineffective. So what Class Dojo is trying is actually to, um, to make sure that every single kid get a reward for positive behavior. Let's say when you raise hand, then you will get a point. Every single student has a monster avatar. Uh, and, then, and then basically, uh, after you got a reward, parents will get alert. So let's say you raise hand and you get a point, and then parents at home will get alert that oh my kids are doing well. <laughs> so that's what they're doing, and and yeah, interestingly, millions of people across the world using these applications, and parents are happy, teachers are happy, students are probably happy, uh, uh, and but they're useful. So these encounters made me think actually um, when I look at back home, okay. When I went, before I, I went to Colombia, I was thinking that I'm gonna do a typical educational job, like teaching, nothing wrong with teaching, but like teaching, or um, I don't know, like setting up um, projects, being a consultant in education policy, and, and so on and so forth. But my encounter with this, um, this, um, this in initiative actually made me realize that how transformative technology can be, uh, how technology can actually change the way we see education. And, and even not only just to basically to deliver the, the educational content itself, but also to support how education is being conducted, how education is being reported, and so on and so forth. But when I look at back to Indonesia, the problem is just too much. Uh, it's not that simple, apparently. If you look at the PISA rank, so for of you who do not PISA, PISA is a program for international students assessment. So it's basically an assessment that is uh, conducted to rank 65 countries based on students' um, performance, students' ability in reading, math, and science. And out of 65 countries, 
Indonesia, not surprisingly, uh, is the two lowest um, uh, are in the two uh, is in the two lowest rank, and and yeah, all the top five are apparently Asian countries. You can tell why, uh, but the thing is, um, th this rank is, is is just one of an example to actually to, to explain to you all basically how is the state of education in the country, and if we look at the report further, we found out that basically one of the main reasons why students are performing very poor in schools are because the lack of the quality of the teachers. So we're thinking, why don't basically the best people, the best students, the best graduates in university go for teaching, being a teacher. But what happened, if you look at two other statistics, this is how basically our teachers, our, school, uh, our public school teachers are getting paid. So I can say that being a teacher in Indonesia is actually one of the professions um, where regardless how many years you teach, you're just going to pay, uh, you're just going to be paid uh, not that much when you're started. So just like an example, um, let's say how teachers getting paid um, when they teach junior secondary education. So the starting salary is about $1,700 per year. It's not per month, it's per year. Uh, and after 15 years, they're getting paid like $2,400 after 15 years. Yeah. And then like salary at the top of the scale is just like $2,600. So, Let's say a teacher teach in a classroom for their whole time, maximum of pay that they can get is just $2,600. It is ridiculous, because if you look at two other professions, like let's say designer, filmmakers, they will be paid based on the portfolio that they have. So the more designs you have, let's say, the more clients you have, the, the better clients you have, then the better you will get paid. Then I'm just thinking, why not for teacher? Why, why should teachers get paid like this? So I start thinking, how can I basically um, do something to help teachers get a better welfare? But I know that as 23 years old, and at the time when I started as 22 years old, I couldn't do that much. I can't just come to the government and say, hey, you need to, be, to pay our teachers better. I can't do that. So what I do is actually creating a platform. I learned back from how technology is actually applied and then see how I can actually contribute. So I started ruangguru.com um, in 2013 and we launched in 2014 as a marketplace for students to connect with private tutors. Why private tutors? Because I believe that if they find out that the teachers in the classrooms are bad, then at some point they will, not, they will need tutor. And tutor is actually one of the easiest way to basically attain skills, particularly if you want to learn something that is not being taught at school. Let's say you want to learn coding and your school doesn't provide coding class, then you need to find somewhere else. So maybe you will, find, you will need a tutor. However, if you look at more deeply on how tutoring industry is structured in Indonesia, you will be surprised. Just like an example. So in average right now, the private tutor is getting paid like 45,000 rupiahs to 60,000 rupiahs per hour. And out of that number, 40 to 70% go to the tuition centers who facilitate them. So you can imagine how much they get. This is ridiculous, right? And if we keep doing that, no one is going to be interested in teaching. Let teaching in the classroom, even just being a tutor, even just to share their knowledge or skills. We always say that, oh yeah, guru itu kan apa, pahlawan tanpa tanda jasa. They don't need reward, they don't need uh, whatever, uh, anything to appreciate them. But at the end of the day, they need to survive. They have kids. They have to send their kids to school, so they need to pay. And if they don't get a, uh, you know, like a proper welfare, they, 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 they wouldn't be able to basically accommodate the needs. So, Right now, Ruang Guru has connected thousands of kids, basically, to find tutor for any kind of subject imaginable. Uh, not only academic subjects, but as random as Kung Fu tutor, as random as Yo-Yo tutor, um, ballet tutor, um, cooking, or whatever you have in mind, basically. We have about 20,000 tutors available on the platform, and you can basically just find anyone 
anywhere. And then the next thing I do, and I think like, what else I can do for education? And one thing that I realized is how students, particularly in public schools, learn um, to prepare for exams. I see that many kids are very dependent on questions bank books, particularly when they are preparing for exams. And I don't say that the books are not good, but the thing is, books are just, are just um, a static tool for you to help for exam. Because what you will find on books are basically are the questions that, you, that, that have been released for the past few years. And then when you look at the question, what you usually do is just basically, oh, I got stuck in these questions, and I'll see the solution, right? And then that's it. You never know what you're good at, what you're weak at. And then, and, and then um, you, you don't have enough, enough information for you to help you to learn. So what we are trying to do at ruangguru.com is basically to provide every student with free access for questions bank, for any kind of subject, for any kind of grade, um, for free. And after they complete a particular task, they will get basically data and analytics that help them to understand about their learning status. So you know, let's say, um, what you're good at, what you're weak at, um, your time management, because basically a lot of kids are failing at the exam because they're poor time management, or let's say how they perform compared to their peers, and so on and so forth. So um, that's what I've been doing, apparently, for the past two years. And a lot of people, who knew me like two or three years ago had no idea that I will do such a thing. Many of them told me like, oh, so your job is just connecting people to learn. What is so special about it? Maybe it's not special for them, but for me it's so special because it's personal. Because I, I receive like tons of emails, tons of letters every single day from the kids who finally managed to go to their dream school because they, they, good, uh, they got a good tutor. Or I got a letter from a tutor or from a teacher who finally can improve their welfare significantly so that they can do anything that they want to explore their potentials. So for me, it's special, it's personal, because I was at that situation. I was at the, at the, at the moment when, um, when I was kid again, when I wanted to explore my potentials, but I couldn't find any resources. I couldn't find a role model to help me to grow. And I think this is just a proof of how actually technology can be leveraged to improve the learning um, in the country. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, and this is a proof of how I do not blame the government for their insufficiency to provide good education. It's a proof that how a young person like me, like you, can actually do something with technology, with something that we are capable of, with something that we know so well. And, and apparently, this thing is what makes me happy, despite being single. So this is my call. What is yours? Thank you. We'd also like to really give our greatest thanks for you guys for coming and supporting us. Um, for to make this event happen, um, so thank you, and...